It's been a great elevator, an escalator of opportunity for folks. And because of a few hundred thousand dollars, folks said we can't afford to do that. I spoke out immediately tomorrow. I'm introducing a motion to try to restore that because whether it's healthcare jobs, whether it's construction jobs, whether it's looking at trade and logistic jobs, green jobs or new technology jobs, we have to make sure that our classrooms, and not just in our elementary, middle schools and high schools, but our community colleges do that. So as mayor, I will focus on that. And then third, we have to break down the walls. This is not just the responsibility of the school district. I've used our city money in my district to build ball fields, after school programs, libraries, to say that this isn't just the responsibility of the school district, but all of us. Those three things, funding, classes that leads to jobs, and breaking down those walls can create a great education system once again. Thank you. Uh, there are rumors going around that uh, traffic is an issue. So, it's our favorite topic, traffic and transportation. You know, many of us have heard uh, over the years, politicians promise us, you know, solutions to uh, the, the, the traffic mess in Los Angeles. And I understand that certain things you can't, you know, a lot of these roads were built before millions of people were added to the population. So, we understand again that there are some severe restrictions. But we'd like to hear tonight some really new and fresh ideas that we haven't heard before that are practical and that we think will make a significant difference with a special attention to Pico Robertson. Would you like to start Since with me, Kevin? <laughs> Mr. Kevin James. All right, we'll start here. You know, there was a study on KBC News. I heard about the report on KBC News. 30% of our time in Los Angeles, sitting in traffic, is spent because we're driving around looking for a parking place. Now we have the ability to do something about that. City Hall was right. They, come up with, they came up with an idea, the Special Parking Revenue Fund. It's your money that goes into parking meters and to pay for parking garages. Hundreds of millions of dollars in that revenue fund. Theory was to, I like the idea, open up a third lane of traffic. Instead of all these meters that take up traffic during the day, by simply, by, open, by opening additional parking garages, like they did in Beverly Hills with some of those subterraneans. I like the idea of putting some open space on them as well. And those were good ideas, written about in the council files. It hasn't been done. It hasn't been done because my opponents in elected office raided the special parking revenue funds. They raided those funds to pay for the salaries and the contracts that they entered into that we couldn't afford. That's where that money went. Now, what we could do is we could still put in some right-hand turn signals. Ms. Grohl, the controller mentioned left-hand turn signals. We need more of them. I would support that, obviously. Light synchronization, yes. But you know what a right-hand turn signal does? Think about between 3 and 7 o'clock when that right lane is open because the parking meters, um, you know, you can't, you can't park at the meter. Well, if you, well, you always know what happens. You're there, and the car in front of you is going to turn right. And the pedestrian's about to step in the crosswalk, and you're hoping that pedestrian across the street can't make it fast enough, aren't you? Well, if you will just study show, if you hold up the pedestrian 20 seconds and put in a right-hand turn signal like we do in Century City, it's safer for the pedestrian because they're not competing with the car. The right-hand turn, the, the car making the right-hand turn can make the turn, and that right lane clears, and traffic will move about 30% faster. With more time, there's more ideas at my website for moving traffic at kevinjamesformayor.com. Thank you. Some practical suggestions, some practical solutions. Obviously, we want to make traffic more efficient, and one of the most direct and pragmatic ways we can do this is to synchronize the traffic signals, but not just in people's communities, but into our neighboring cities, into Beverly Hills, into Culver City, into Santa Monica, and if you want to pick Pico, Olympic, Wilshire, synchronize that as it flows into Santa Monica, to pay attention, much more attention to goods movement. Goods, obviously, they equal jobs, but they also equal trucks, and we have to repave our major uh, transit uh, arteries where the trucks are coming and going from the harbor and the airport so we can speed up the flow of goods and preserve jobs and not disrupt the life of people's neighborhoods. Better paving of our streets and sidewalks obviously makes traffic quieter and it flows better. And to upgrade our intersections to increase capacity and to move vehicles through at a faster rate. Fixed parking, 
take empty lots, dilapidated lots, and convert them into city parking lots. A couple of more specific examples. Fix the entire LAX campus road system and take leadership of the arterial roads that connect the infrastructure to the airport, to the car companies, to the rental companies, the hotels, and make a seamless transition uh, for airport circulation for travelers, tourists, and people who work there and live in the area. Another example, the UCLA road system on and off campus. Uh, the arterials don't flow smoothly, and they're very narrow, and there's nowhere near enough parking uh, in the area. I know there's a lot of folks here tonight who actually live there, especially when you look at Olympic, Wilshire, Sepulveda, Veteran, and Westwood. Clean up those main campus connectors. Uh, no parking, uh, repave, synchronize, restrict turning, bus stops off street, all of that will help improve that community. And of course, the mayor has three appointments <coughs> along with herself on the MTA, the Metropolitan Transportation Authority. Like, no one's got to tell me about traffic when I had a job in Century City and, and lived on the east side and my commute time was over three hours. Something I don't want to live through again is something that as mayor, uh, if it's maybe it's just my personal interest that I will do something about. Now, specifically, we spent tons of time, if not years, if not decades, talking about these major infrastructure projects, subway and, and rail, uh, and then and then we got to spend another 10 to 20 years to figure out if we can if they're feasible or if we can get the funding. We need solutions today. We need to make sure we're increasing all mobility options. We're looking at buses, at taxis, at car share, bike share, carpooling, obviously the synchronization of lights, better management of our data, allowing the private sector to come in with their solutions. We need more modes of transportation, increased mobility so people can get from anywhere in the city, from home to work to recreation to back home to their friend's house. Right now, usually there's just one and that's got to be your car. Right? Or if you take public transportation, it takes hours. As mayor, I will focus on making sure that I'm attracting private capital, private enterprise, so we're actually fixing our infrastructure system instead of praying that the federal government or the state government is going to give us more money and thinking of these grandiose rail problems. We need solutions today, increase modes of transportation, allow the private sector to enter and make sure that people can get from anywhere they want to get in the city to somewhere else. You know, this issue isn't just about cars and buses and trains. This is about people. It's about our lives. It's about the person we heard when we were at Leo Beck Temple who was unemployed and was trying to get to a job interview, but because he was stuck in traffic for so long coming from the San Fernando Valley to Century City, by the time he got there, they said, we don't even want to talk to you. It's about families who don't see each other anymore or who can only see each other in these narrow windows. We can go see each other at 2 a.m., no problem in the city. We can see how much we're losing in our health when cars don't move. It's about the billions of dollars, it's the millions of hours that are wasted every single year because of our traffic problems. So let's dig down. There is no silver bullet. There's no fancy, you know, a new idea, but it is about implementation. Here's my plan. One, paved 1,600 miles of roads in my first term as mayor. Taking Measure R, which has money for road paving, we can do that by bonding against it now. Instead of waiting for 26 years, let's do it in four years, because the interest rates are lower than even the inflation rate for paving a street. Let's get it done, and let's get it done quickly. Two, public transit. Ten lines that we get done or well underway by the time I'm out of office in eight years. Wilshire Subway to the west side. A Crenshaw line that comes up through South Los Angeles. An LAX link, finally, from our airport. A north-south valley line that comes to a tunnel, a transit tunnel, instead of widening the 405, that would allow us to get from Sherman Oaks to UCLA in 10 minutes with a transit line and a toll road for cars above. <coughs> Making sure that we can look at other lines, a downtown connector, and other places that we can look at busways as well where those are effective, and finishing the expo line. Three, I don't have to say this to an orthodox audience, but a more walkable city. In my own neighborhoods, we have taken so many cars off the street because we built up the streetscape. We've emphasized the pedestrian safety in neighborhoods like Silver Lake and Echo Park and Atwater Village, which used to be thoroughfares for cars, but now are places where people make the decision, why don't we go out to dinner in the neighborhood? Let's walk there ourselves. And we've increased that safety and made this a better town. A more bikeable city. 
Yes, car shares, as Manuel mentioned. We've done that in, the, in Hollywood for the first time here in the city of Los Angeles. And finally, the use of technology, but my time is up. Those things together are programmed to finally give us some relief from what we're choking on in traffic every single day. Who would have thought that we'd look back and say, we love Carmageddon weekend? <laughs> or look on wonderful Jewish holidays, when it doesn't take you much to get where you need to go. Or looking at this city when 1984 Olympics and everyone thought the world would end because we were going to be stuck in traffic. What happened? People changed their behaviors. So when we look at planning for the future of Los Angeles and transportation, there are common sense solutions and there's long-term solutions. As a city council member, I fought for banning road construction during rush hour. Seems like a simple thing. I fought for synchronization of lights and made sure that we have, and I apologize if you got a ticket, but anti-gridlock zones. So in fact, that you can see that street move from four to seven o'clock in the afternoon or from seven to nine in the morning to get where you need to go. To looking at that synchronization of lights when you were doing the same time of doing your LED lights. To making sure that we looked at a long-term plan for the city of Los Angeles. Every year, we'd have to do something for the MTA and we'd create a new plan. And so I challenged the department to come up not only with a plan for the funds we wanted to get from the MTA, but a bicycle plan. And a plan for how we were going to spend our money and compete nationally for the kind of dollars that are so critically important for the city of Los Angeles. And when we talk about the Measure R dollars, and I was one of the leading proponents when it first came out, the importance of spending that money and managing it. There are a lot of people who can talk about doing something. I've demonstrated that I have the management skills and the experience to be able to ensure that those dollars that come forward from the MTA, that they link up and we do get that subway to the seat and the Crenshaw line and continue that expo line and to make sure that we have, as I did, funded a, a study that looked at specifically going under the 405. That was a basis in the beginning of what we needed to do to address the issue. But traffic is an environmental issue, it is a people issue, and it is for the future of Los Angeles. But it is not only about those transportation systems, but it also is about paving Wilshire Boulevard. Everyone has said to me, if you just pave Wilshire Boulevard, I will vote for you for anything. <laughs> so that's my promise. Thank you. <clears throat> the most important responsibility of a government is to protect us make sure we're safe. And I gotta tell you, a lot of us have not felt very safe uh, recently. Uh, we understand that violent crime is down, but there have been a lot of burglaries in our neighborhood. Uh, over the past several years, the big question has always been, we need to hire 10,000 police officers. We're now very close to that goal. We're like 200 short. Uh, but at the same time, the um, overtime has been cut. So in our Western District, we have less policemen. Uh, and in the spirit of tonight, which is how to do more with less, being realistic, considering we have a huge budget deficit, what can you tell us that's believable in terms of improving uh, safety? And we're going to start with Council Member John Perry. As Mayor, public safety will continue to be a top priority, and I think you all know, but I'm going to share this with you anyway, that over 70% 70, 70 of our city budget is spent on police and fire. And under my watch, that would not change. That is a number one priority. Even though our crime statistics show that they are at an all-time low, if something happens to you, you're not going to feel safe. So we have to continue to, to address the concerns of people in their respective uh, neighborhoods. Furthermore, <laughs> this is a core function. This is what government should do. And so we have to police and provide public safety in a way that is more efficient, more effective, and to use technology, to take care of the officers that we have here now, to contain our overtime costs, to make sure that we are able to service their pensions and their health care costs, and to make sure that they are being treated fairly and that their contribution to their health care and to their pensions is uh, done in a manner that is equitable and, and respectful of the station that they hold in the hierarchy of uh, uh, city employees. But it's also important to make sure that we can pay for them and not get deeper into debt. And that's why I think policing with technology may be the next wave of how we 
um, govern this city. I, for one, have represented South Los Angeles for the last 11 years as an area with very high crime and have been very effective in working with LAPD to put cameras in open spaces, in parks, so that it reduces the number of officers that need to be in a particular location, but feed into the police station or the division and help the officers police or actually be many places at the same time. I think that's something that we can all embrace throughout the city uh, to make sure that people get treated in a, in a manner that is fair and equal and provide a good police response time uh, to people throughout the entire city. The public safety is something, again, that I have felt uh, very personally. Um, I, have, I have friends that I used to play baseball with or went to uh, my best friend in middle school, one in particular, that are no longer here with us uh, because of gang violence. It's something that I have felt on a very personal level, and it's something that I will never forget. Now, our police and fire problems stem from our budget issues, and we need to fix the pension system. But if we actually dive deep into what we're talking about, in terms of how we do it without having to increase any budget, it's not a numbers problem, it's not about more cops on the street. It's about better management, it's all about being more efficient. It's about better data management and better aggregation and make sure that our technology is up to speed and is aligned and integrated. Look, I was a, a consultant at one of the best management consulting firms out there, and I've actually worked in the private sector with executives on how to deal with their data and how to have better response systems for their emergency procedures within their company. I was a technology executive who actually sold services to police agencies across the country and actually understand firsthand the problems of police agencies and how backed up some of our agencies are, including our very own LA Police Department. In fact, um, if you actually average out the time that, that police spend on the job, two-thirds of their time are behind a desk. We don't have a problem with the size of the police force. Again, we have an efficiency and effectiveness problem. We need better management. There are still communities with high crime rates. I live in them. In fact, across the street from my house, there's been a number of drive-bys this past year. I've seen it firsthand. We need a mayor who understands it firsthand, understands the management issues, and understands the technology and innovation to make it better without having to ask more from the budget, but actually fix the problems and take them head on. That's what I bring as mayor and in particular, I want to make sure that our police are more integrated with the community. Because police shouldn't be intimidating our communities. They should be part of our communities. And that's how we're going to have a more harmonious society and really ensure public safety for everybody. Before we move on, Councilman, I just want to note that there's a volunteer uh, security force called uh, LA Shmira that is actually, they're unarmed. And they're uh, providing security to them. Something that started in the uh, Pico Robertson Beverly Wood area uh, recently, and I just want to note that that they are providing security. Yes, thank you, Daly Schmier. Thank you, Hatsola. When we look at the partnerships that we can have, they're tremendous. And again, there's only so much that 10,000 officers can do. There's a lot that 4 million can do. Now, I was raised in a household that was rooted in and devoted to public safety. My father was a prosecutor for over 30 years. My sister was a prosecutor. I was raised around the table, hearing those stories, remembering the days when we had 1,000 murders here in Los Angeles. And this year we had a little bit over 300. That's way too many, 300 families broken, 300 lives lost. But it is a huge improvement of where we were. And this is something I will never compromise on as mayor. I've been very proud in the midst of a recession to not roll back the resources that we have in terms of the number of officers even when we have cutbacks, because it is critical that we maintain the strength of that force. You see, it's part of a virtuous cycle. You asked for a realistic answer to this, a believable one. Well, just, this is a theory for me. This is practice. Look to Hollywood. In Hollywood, we were able to make it a place that was more attractive to jobs. The LA Chamber of Commerce rates every single city council district each year, and this year I was number one. Last year I was number one in terms of job growth, in terms of new business growth. When we had more money coming out of Hollywood, we could hire more of these officers. When we could hire more police officers, more businesses wanted to come. When more businesses wanted to come, we had the revenues to provide the services to create more officers. It's a cycle. So we have to become a more business-friendly city in order to afford the police officers, get rid of the gross receipts tax, make it quicker to get a business open, 
make sure we attract and talk to CEOs directly and get them here. But it isn't just about police officers. We brought crime down, cut violent crime by two-thirds in Hollywood. You remember what it was like 15 years ago there. You would have been caught dead there. But now, when you are there, it's because we invested in intervention and prevention programs that I want to expand. When a 16-year-old girl in my district was shot and killed walking with her boyfriend, a block and a half from a park in my district, we started a program that then the mayor built on and turned into something called Summer Night Lights. 32 parks now that are kept open in the summertime with arts and athletic programs. We need to be strong on crime, but we have to be smart to prevent it as well.